Hello and welcome to Sounding Board, a community access television production of Seroptimus International of Novato. My name is Madeline Peters and my guest here, Stephanie Smith, is from the Matrix Parent Network and Resource Center. But before I introduce uh, Stephanie, I'd like to just say a little bit about Seroptimus. Seroptimus is an international organization whose goals are advancing the status of women and girls, both locally and internationally. Stephanie uh, Smith is here as a representative of Matrix Parent Network and Resource Center. And Stephanie, I want to take this opportunity to thank you. I know you're a very busy person <laughs> in your role at Matrix, and I really appreciate your taking the time to uh, spend a little time with us educating the community about what your organization is all about. Well, thank you for having me. I was glad to be able to explain what Matrix Gut does because a lot of people say, I've never heard of your agency. I wish I knew sooner. Yes, I'm sure. Yep. I'm sure. Uh, what I'd like you to, to start off with is if you could talk about your arrival sto story, kind of like how you personally arrived at Matrix. So I was one of those people who did not know what Matrix was when I arrived in Marin County. I had moved here from Pennsylvania. I had two children and one of them at the time was in special education. And she was in middle school and the adjustment was very hard for her changing from a Pennsylvania school till here. And she was struggling. And I, um, at the time, thought I knew about special education and had a couple questions because it seemed to be that things were different in California. And I don't remember how I found Matrix. It might have been in some directory. And I called and asked a question. And then I saw Matrix again at one of the county special ed meetings, the special education advisory committee that the uh, county offers. This was at the county uh, school of education, county office of education? Yeah, it was in that building. But I see. Every, um, Every area in California is part of a SELPA, a special education local plan, and they have a community advisory committee of parents and educators and community agencies to advise all the school districts in Marin County on special ed. And because I'd worked in a children's hospital as an advocate for kids there, I decided I needed to get involved, and there was Matrix, and they said, hey, why don't you come and volunteer for us? Well, you also, uh, so you have the connection in terms of uh having a, ch uh, a young daughter with uh, special needs, but you also have a background in education yourself. So could you explain yeah. a little bit of that? Yeah, well, I um, have two degrees in education, and um, that's sort of an aside to my work at Matrix. It certainly helps, because um, we have staff who are paid who are all parents of kids with special needs. It's a bonus for me, because I have an education degree and understand some of the complexities of the education system. And as part of my journey, I guess, with my kids, I also got on a school board in Marin and learned about education sitting on the side of the table as a school board member. So I've been a teacher, been a school board member, and I've been a parent of a child with special needs trying to understand the system and help my daughter get her way through school. So you served as your daughter's advocate um, have the educational background and then served in lots of roles. We like the community organizer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, part of Matrix's role is helping to build parent leaders because not only do we want to help our children, we want to help other people's children too. Because if I've had problems and I can resolve them, and if it gets better in the school where my child is, it helps other people after me. So we always hope that parents will help more than their child once they get in a spot. And that's really how all our staff have gotten to Matrix. They've said, hey, I've figured this out and I want to help other people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's, uh, so can you describe or elucidate, you said, so the people who are at Matrix found Matrix because they are, they have a, a child with special needs that they're kind of helping navigate right. the education system. So can you elaborate a little bit more on what Matrix is because it's more than just a group of these people coming <laughs> together to support, to, to get support right. for uh, navigating yeah. the educational system. Sure. So actually when I started at Matrix, even in, as an employee, I had not realized the um, 
the designations matrix has. And I don't think a lot of people also realize that. So every state in the United States, by federal law, federal special education law, needs one parent training and information center. And that's because the federal government realized and acknowledged that parents need to be an active member, and by law have to be a member of their child's special education plan, their IEP. And so Matrix has been designated by the U.S. Department of Education as the Parent Training and Information Center for Marin, Napa, Solano, and Sonoma. And the California Department of Education um, acknowledges us as a family empowerment center for several of our counties. And then the California Department of Developmental Services has authorized us to be a family resource center for families birth to three. So when you cover the gamut, we start with families from birth, if their child has a special need, all the way up to age 26, so we can help families help their young adult transition into adulthood. So we are an agency to help parents give information about their child's special needs, about the systems that serve them. So one is obviously schools, another might be regional center. Um, we get more questions now on health care with all the changes in that. And the health care Just try yeah. to access how do I get my insurance to pay for my child's autism ABA is an mm -hmm. example. Um, we give uh, emotional support to parents. We have families who call us in tears, families who call us angry, who are emotionally sort of distraught or in turmoil about what's happening with their child. Um, so we also offer support as well as information and resources. It's amazing, you know, because I know what the building looks like, and uh, you know, it's not as though you're a multi-storied multiplex with hundreds of employees. No. You know, right. you're a small center here, but you certainly have many layers to the level of services and your impact. You know, it's like your impact just, uh, you, you've been recognized on several different levels as more than just um, a parent network. And uh, it's just amazing that so much is packed into one. Well, you know, you've said it really well because sometimes I think people see our 1-800 number and they think we have this phone bank of many people answering the phones. And we have enough parent advisors and the staff that I supervise, and we have enough of them to cover four days of the week. So, um, and we have some backup, but it's not like we're a massive organization. We're a nonprofit. Um, we get some funding from the federal government and the state of California, but it's not nearly enough to cover what we do. So we give our services free. Um, sometimes parents will call and say, now how much do I pay for this? And we say, well, nothing. We welcome donations that helps bridge the gap. Um, but it's, um, it's sort of a relief for parents to know that there's somebody out there who's walked the path they've walked, or a similar path and um, is there to listen and understand it from the parent perspective. It's a lifeline for a lot of these. The yeah, oh. matrix is definitely a lifeline for these yeah. families as well as uh, you know, all the people associated with who are trying to support these right. families. Well, actually one mom had said after we do workshops and training. So we, do, we work with families one-on-one, -on -one, um, either on the phone or they come to our office. And we also do group trainings. And after one of our trainings, a mom had said, um, to one of our staff that uh, felt like she had cause glasses now and she could see clearly that before she thought sh she had an image of what was happening but now that she went to our training she said it just looks so different it's like someone gave me glasses and I hadn't been able to see before. Uh -huh. Now uh, one of the things I noticed too is uh, because I get your uh, email blasts is that you have infor information provided to the community both in English and Spanish. Yes. So we have bilingual parent advisors. So um, that is because you know we want to be able to serve um, all the people who may have needs. And um, I've often thought what it would be like if I were in a country where I did not have good command over the native language. And people are making plans and decisions about my child's education. So um, it's, it's hard enough if you have an education degree, understand English, um, and I had trouble with my child's IEP. I mean, I, it took me a long time to grasp what it really meant, what my daughter's special needs were, and I can't imagine what it would be like if I also was trying to understand the language. So we are there, actually we translate um, English to English. We talk to another parent who speaks English and explain their English documents in parent language because sometimes they're an educational language. That's true. Yes. So we do translation, English to English. English to English. Educationese to parentese. Mm -hmm. And then for our, our clients who speak Spanish, not only does that have to happen, our parent advisor is there to talk to them in their native language to make it understandable. 
Are the other parent networks throughout the United States um, also providing a similar level of service? And well, we're all affiliated, but we're all slightly different. So the Bay Area has four parent centers, um, and they, they all have the same mandate, is to help parents understand the systems that serve their children, their educational systems, through that parent center grant we get from the federal government. Mm -hmm. So they're all similar. So I always say to a family, if you move, go find the parent center in the state or the area that you're in. And we have a button on our website that says find a parent center near you. Because if you've moved from California and you're going to Ohio um, and you're feeling new, there is a network of parents in Ohio that could be there to help you. And all of these parent centers have different names. So we are called Matrix Parent Network. Uh, Support for Families is the agency in San Francisco that serves San Francisco families. Parents Helping Parents serves families on the peninsula, and Dredef serves families in the East Bay. So we all have hmm. different names, different boards, different funding sources to a different extent, and we might do our, our, our uh, services slightly different. Mm -hmm. um, we have a heavy emphasis on one-on-one -on -one help through the phone and talking with parents and workshops. Um, other agencies, uh, there's a Rowell Family Center in Northern California that serves a large region, so they don't have the ability to drive uh, to different schools uh, to have meetings. But we're fortunate that at least in our area we do get out and do community meetings as well. We, we go to meetings uh, at schools and with other agencies. Well, I remember uh, years ago just watching um, Matrix, and it's like emerging stages yes. and it's just it was amazing to me and one of the things that I, I mentioned earlier is that struck me is that um, at that time there was a connection that matrix had with one of the local hospitals so that mm -hmm. as if a parent uh, delivered a child with special needs someone from mm -hmm. matrix was called to go and give mm -hmm. the parent support just sort of quiet support at the time of the child's birth to kind of like where you are now, as you said, it's birth to 26, but then also uh, the level of services. And it's like, it's amazing. It was amazing to me at that time when, when uh, in the early stages of Matrix, the connection, the close connection they made on an emotional level with people's, with families, right. and as well as then delivering the services in a timed fashion mm -hmm. so that people could get over, oh my, being overwhelmed and then be able to hear Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what they needed to know in order to right. be an advocate for their yeah. child. That's a good point because things have changed obviously in 30 sure. years. This is our 30th anniversary. That's right. So I just wanted to make sure to mention that. And years ago when it started, it was a group of mothers around a kitchen table who had kids with very visible, probably special needs and disabilities. And there were, w there were hospital visits. And we still do an occasional home visit for uh, families with little wee ones. And now what's happened over 30 years, obviously things have changed in terms of how we serve. Much more website. We have a Yahoo online chat room that's monitored by us where parents can go and communicate with each other. Um, when I started at Matrix, our website was very little. Now our website is full of information. And in the disability range, what has really happened is um, in the beginning, it seemed that there were more families of kids with more physical disabilities. Um, disabilities people can see and over time me most of our clients now we still serve those families most of our clients now have what I call the hidden disabilities at ADHD uh, speech and language problems emotional problems uh, autism and so um, many of those hidden disabilities are often more misunderstood by the public and sometimes by schools because you can't see something when you look at the person their child but there is something that is a barrier and we serve families even before they know they have a child with special needs. We get families calling saying something is not right, I'm worried. Mm -hmm. So um, we've really grown in terms of the scope of the kinds of special needs we serve and uh, probably the extent of the information. People call us from other states because they found our website and um, we will refer them to their parent center but just I think it's testimony to our e-reach, you know, exactly. our, our social media, our ability to to go beyond having to come to our office. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And your influence, your infl you know, I remember some of the parents who sat around that initial table. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's amazing to me to know, you know, from my own experience, just how it started and, and to see where it is now. It's, it's incredible. 
uh, let's say you talked about uh, what, okay, well, you talked about the range of services, but what is it that families need? Let's see, what do families need most? I think the one thing we hear a lot and that we know ourselves personally as parents of kids with special needs is how isolating and alone you can feel with your problem. Like you've been made to feel you're the only one who's ever had that problem. And so often what families need is at least one other person, whether it's us on the phone or through our online chat room, that there are other people who say, you know, I understand that. Actually, I've had that same issue. Mm -hmm. And so oftentimes they need connection. I think they just need to connect with somebody who's not going to pass judgment. We never tell a parent what to do. Um, we help them talk through their options because what I may want for my child with ADHD is not what you may have for mm -hmm. your hopes and dreams for your child. And so many parents just want a listening ear. Um, these days, different from even when I started at Matrix, the wealth of information can be overwhelming. So we can kind of cut through some of that and point people in the direction of a few good websites, some great articles, because I think sometimes families drown in information as they're trying to find information for their kids, or there's not enough, depending on your child's special needs. So well, I, I can imagine, too, well, as what you said is you help kind of narrow parents' focus, because because we are in the information generation, mm -hmm. information age, not all that information that's available is, is, is good. Right. So you become the, the agency that vets the information. And again, the whole tailoring thing, that, that probably helps kind of calm people down, parents mm -hmm. down, and kind of specifically narrow their focus. So sometimes we'll say, first things first, what do, how can we help you today? Because okay. there can be so many things the family's dealing with. It's okay. Let's l we listen to their stories and say, okay, what can be worked on today? Um, and so our jobs are not to be an advocate. Some people will call Matrix and say, I want an advocate, and we will explain that the parent is the child's advocate, and our role is to help parents be better advocates. So you do that through information, learning better communication skills. I can think of many things I did, even as an educator, parent. Um, that I over communicated or I'd write too long of emails. So we help parents learn effective ways to communicate with mm -hmm. busy educators. Emotional support, find information, get organized, and uh, we try to model that for parents. Stephanie, why do people need these uh, services that you described? Oh, there are many reasons parents need a place like Matrix. Um, one, I think emotional support. It's not easy having a child with special needs. You have to manage your dreams and hopes that may need to be altered. Um, you can feel alone. Um, people need support in trying to sort out their decisions. I mean, you can just have so many options in front of you or no options in front of you, and you need help navigating through. I think the biggest thing is not feeling alone. And our title, Ma Matrix Parent Network, implies and says we are a network of parents helping other parents. Um, and I think the biggest reason is parenting is hard. Parenting special needs is even harder. And um, it's nice to have someone who you know is not going to judge you, uh, who isn't going to tell you what to do. Many parents do want to be told, what should I do? Right. Um, but I think we help empower them to give them the confidence that they can make their decision. And um, the more you feel confident and see other people who've gone before you, find a path that works for their family and their child, I think it can make that parent more confident, the parents more confident, their child feels that. Uh, the flip is, you have an anxious parent, children pick up on that. Sure. Whether it's an infant or whether it's an adolescent. And if a parent is worried and anxious about their child, hovering too much, doing too much for them, it's not always best for the child. So we need matrix, all of us, to help us be better parents so it spreads over onto our child and actually onto our family because it, it changes family dynamics when there's a child in the family with special needs. Well, as you're describing this, obviously the services, but then also the development of the parent as advocate, that's quite a high level of service to people who are concerned and uh, about their children, their child, their children. And uh, it's also like very empowering. It's like you're, it's more than just a network and resource center. It's like this is like it's, it almost seems as though it's professional development 
preparation. Well, it is. I mean, actually, one example, some parents will come and realize their paperwork is a mess. We'll say, okay, in order to help you, we need to look at your special ed papers. And they bring us a box, or they bring a stack. And so <laughs> step one to be an empowered parent is getting organized. And we have a wonderful volunteer who um, is a former special ed teacher who sets up appointments one-on-one -on -one with families to get their papers organized. Because once you're organized, you're better able to start the path to know what information you have, know what you don't have, and try to understand what you have. Then you can do the next step, which is communicate with others about your child. Yeah, what, what strikes me is that in, in all the different things that you describe, you're meeting the parent on the parent's level, but you're making sure that the parent doesn't stay on that level. The parent actually is uh, nurtured forward in becoming a successful advocate for their child. Correct, and every parent's at a different place. We have parents who call who are organized, who just need a little bit of coaching. We have other parents who may have disabilities themselves. I mean, many of the special needs, and I'll use one as an example, um, my daughter is adopted, and so is my son, and their birth parents had ADHD. My kids have ADHD. So if you have a parent who has a similar disability, you can be struggling yourself True. to understand. Yes. And um, that is also what we work on, is helping parents say, OK, where are you? What do you need? Because what they may need is different than what I may need. Mm -hmm. And so we do customize it. I mean, part of it's listening to the parent. And some parents, we just listen and help contain their worry, because they're not ready to do anything but that. Now, um, well, actually, that's quite a uh, thorough description yeah. of Matrix and your connection with it. And uh, one of the things that you mentioned is, you know, Matrix is funded by several different sources, and one of the sources you do as you do kind of recruit from the community, and you have a fundraising, a luncheon coming up. Mm -hmm. I'd like to give you an opportunity to speak about that uh, again, uh, so that we can encourage sure. people to participate. You know, it's not just knowing that this uh, resource network, this resource center exists, but also ways to support it. Sure. So why don't you go ahead? Sure. Well, so um, every year for, oh, maybe four or five years, we've had an author luncheon. And we bring in an author of a book who has written on a topic related to special needs. And this year, our authors have written a book um, it's called Married with Special Needs Children. And they are going to yep. be talking about not just marriage, but the impact of parenting a child with special needs on the adult relationships. and. Um, we're looking forward to this exciting event. Um, these are two authors from back east, and they will be sort of explaining the impact it has on uh, a parent and couple. And this is on um, April 15th. It's a Monday, it's a luncheon, and it's at the Marin Art and Garden Center. And it's open to anyone. I mean, we, have, we also serve professionals. We didn't really talk about that strand of matrix, but professionals are welcome to come, parents, grandparents. Actually, uh, someone had asked me, gee, my uh, children are 28. Does this apply to me? And I said, well, if you are still parenting together with That's the right. father or the mother, a young adult, a 26-year-old who has special needs, absolutely, because the, this, these authors are going to talk about how to keep your relationship healthy with your partner while parenting your child, because it can take a toll on relationships. Now, this is also, as you mentioned earlier, the Matrix, Matrix 30th anniversary. Yeah. So this is, uh, you're celebrating uh, 30 years all year. Yes. And so this is just one of the series of events that serves to sh put the spotlight on yes. Matrix. Yes, I think we're going to have another one in the fall, most likely, of um, bringing together people who have worked with us for the last 30 years. Um, hopefully, we'll have some of the adults by now uh, whose parents we helped um, and people along the way who've helped fund us. We have a lot of community supporters and always appreciate any others who may have a neighbor with a, a relative, a neighbor of a child with special needs and they know how challenging it is. So our other events are just honoring all of our partners, community partners, parent partners, business partners. Um, we don't. We can't exist unless we partner with others That's because true. our yeah. services are free. Yes, and um, we're fortunate. We want to keep to be able to do that. Well, again, I'd like to take this opportunity to say thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing the background, your arrival story to Matrix, and uh, all the extensive services that parents can get through Matrix. Again, a reminder that there's an author luncheon coming up. 
and that matrix ex exists because of extensive community support. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the crew members for sounding board Sropnos, of Seropnos International of Novato, as well as Executive Director of NPAT, Rick Tucker, and Leon Johnson. This is a totally volunteer operation, and uh, we really appreciate it. Thank you very much, and good day. Mm -hmm.